Hi everybody. How's everybody doing? Praise the Lord. I would like to welcome you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Wherever you are watching from all over the globe, thank you so much for watching and God bless all of you for watching. It is well with you. This is Swarotonga Miti Evangelist. Today I want to talk about these um, five signs. You are in spiritual warfare and how to fight it. We are in battle in this world, a spiritual warfare battle. We may not see it, we might forget it's there, but the enemy would love nothing than to fill our minds with discouragement and defeat. If you are a believer who is living like salt and light in a dark world, you won't go for a long without encountering spiritual warfare. Through obstacles and attacks, he will hurl your direction. And though we can't stop this cruel attacks, we don't have to let him win. God reminds us in his word to stay aware of Satan's schemes, to live alert in this world, and to stay close to him. Amen? God gives specific um, instructions in his word. He gives us all we need to stand strong in his life and have victory over the battlefields of our mind, heart, and soul. Yet all too often, we race through busy, full days, ill-equipped, unprepared, or simply not aware of what we are up against or who the real enemy is even is. Amen? The force of darkness don't wait for us to be ready for the attack. They are ruthless, determined, and cunning. The devil could not guess careless if we feel prepared or prayed up for our day. In fact, he prefers we're not. Amen? But in a dark, um, in a broken dark world, how can we really know if we are facing the expected difficult difficulties of life as compared to true spiritual warfare attacks of the enemy? Jesus himself told us that in this life we would experience troubles. From the book of um, John 16 verse 33, we know this is um, this to be true. And though many times we may not fully know who or what is behind the struggles, we can be assured that God equips us for battle and he instructs us to live alert. Amen? Spiritual warfare is not giving the devil more attention or focusing too much on his evil way. Biblical warfare is making ourselves more attentive to what God is doing and reminding, um, remembering to stand firm and let him fight our fiercest battles. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's power through his spirit, his word, and in prayer. And we can be confident that he is always with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Leading our ways and covering us from behind. Praise the Lord. There are many ways we may be fighting spiritual battles in our lives. So here are five examples from scripture of spiritual warfare. Number one, sudden or extreme onslaught of various troubles, losses, and trials. This is ruthless attack that Satan often brings against believers. It seems to come out of nowhere, and it's just one thing after another. It's hard to even see straight. You feel your life is sudden spinning out of control. Amen. Job's life is an example to us of what this may be like. From the book of Job 1 um, to 2, the devil went to God to ask him if he could um, torment Job, thinking he would try to lead him away from the Lord. Through the many struggles he faced, 
As we know from the book of Job, this righteous man stood strong. Amen. Though it seems he was losing everything dear to him, he knew that God held him secure through all the loss and hardship around him. God will never allow the enemy to have full control. He doesn't have the final say over our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. We may face battles and attacks in this world, but we can trust in our mighty God to be our shelter through it all. Praise the Lord. Number two, attacks of physical danger, illness, life-threatening loss. We know from God's word that the enemy wants nothing more than to steal, kill and destroy our lives and all we love. From the book of John 10 verse 10, he is a thief, a roaring lion and breathes on God's people. He decides to silence our voices and take us out of this world to shut off the light of God's love and hope through Christ. Many of us have experienced a near death experiences, sudden and terrible illness, or holding loved ones who were at the brink of heaven. And yet, God intervened to keep us here longer. There's many stories in the Bible of God's people under great physical attacks and danger. And so many miracles that God performed to bring them safety through, even when it didn't make sense, even when it seems to be the end. Amen. Daniel faced lions in a lion's den. From the book of Lion, uh, from the book of Daniel 6, his attacks, attackers thought he'd gone, he'd be gone by morning. But God intervened, intervened um, and shut the mouth of God. Every lion, be assured, God is still shutting mouths today. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you are facing attacks and feel your life has been um, threatening, our God is a miracle worker. The Bible reminds us that our times are in his hands. We can be confident that he knows every day we are to be here on earth. And he will keep us and our loved ones safety in his care until he calls us home to heaven. Praise the Lord. There's no reason to fear. We stand strong through prayer and his word. Number three, increased temptation and luring towards sin or wrong choices. Though we live with daily struggles, and temptations all around us. Many times there are spiritual attacks on our lives that put us at greater risk to go astray. It is a battle, a ruthless one, and the enemy will fight hard against us. He decides not only to bring us down, but also all those around us. He loves to see new stories blessed across headlines of believers who have fallen, who have made terrible choices of sin. Amen. He loves disunity among Christians, wants nothing more than to break our families and every relationship we hold dear. We must stand strong and stay aware. So don't give him a foothold in your life. Don't give him even an inch of room. He'll come in and wreak havoc and try to lead us astray faster than we even know what happened. Amen. Often when we find ourselves weary, already weakened, we are his, on his radar. Jesus himself is a greatest example of this when he faced the devil's temptation in the wilderness. From the book of Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11, he was fasting, he was hungry, he was physically physically weakened and tired. And of course, the enemy jumped on that time to bring on the temptation to a greater degree than ever. Amen. So one slip up is all he was looking for. One wrong move, one yes to sin, but Jesus stood strong and resisted his attack 
every single one. Amen. He spoke God's words out, out loud. He held fast to truth and stepped up, stepped over Satan's um, vicious lies and attacks. And he leads us to the same today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't be taken unaware when you start sensing strong pulls away from God's truth and ways you can know who is at the bottom of it all. Amen. Number four, feeling of overwhelming, despair, darkness, and fear. Many may struggle with anxiety and fear in this life. Many may be facing depression and mood disorders or mental illness, but often the, the attacks of spiritual forces against our lives raises the intensity to even greater degree than normal day to day struggles. It's ruthless, unrelenting. We feel alone and completely overwhelmed and stuck in deep fear and despair. Recognize this darkness for what it is and stand strong. Amen. This is where Satan will lead some to even con contemplate taking their lives or making choices they never would have thought they are they had make a screw trap. But there's hope from the pit because of Christ. He is the one who can lead us straight out of that darkness. He is the one who calm our fears and give us strength. We didn't even know was possible. Amen. Praise the Lord. Elijah, the prophet, was a great man of God. He had led the battles against false idols and resisted those who stood against God. In, in all eyes, he was a hero, respected and honored. And yet, right after such victory and success, he faced extreme warfare. He ran for his life in fear. Despair and darkness had crippled his life and he couldn't even think straight. It seems that he had forgotten everything God had just done on behalf of his people. From the book of 1 King, uh, chapter 19. But here's what I love about God. He came to him right where he was. He provides for him. He took care of him. He strengthens him. He gave great mercy and grace to him. And then he did this. He called him to actions. He gave him a plan to keep moving forward. He still had great purposes for the prophet in the coming days. There was still work to be done. And he does the same for us today too. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you find yourself running scared or stuck in despair, stop long enough to think through who you are really running from. Don't pay into the enemy's pursuit and attacks. He has no lasting power over you and God will hold you strong for the road still ahead. Praise the Lord. Number five, deep confusion, feelings of condemnation and guilt dulled spiritual awareness. The last one can be difficult to see through at times because this attack can be subtle and can happy happen slowly over time. But when we stop and look closely, we can call it out for what it is. Amen. A slow, constant pulling away from God's truth will leave us feeling confused, irritated, conflicted, and facing generalized feelings of guilt and condemnation that we just can't seem to shake off. We've lost our desire, too much to do, even good things. Amen. We are not in God's word. We're out of fellowship with believers. Somehow, believing the lie we can do this life, things all on our own. And yet, we feel dark clouds of confusion, guilty that follows us around and won't go away. Bitterness can set in. 
conflict and broken relationships that we once care about. So we don't even know what to believe um, anymore and have started listening more to what the world says is right. Amen? Get out of this trap now. Wake up. Stir yourself to action and know what God's power is greater to break through that trap of condemnation and confusion. God reminds us in this word that he is not the author of confusion, but of peace. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, he tells us that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. From the book of Romans 8, verse 1, his spirit will bring conviction over sin to his children. He will draw us to himself and shows us that we need to make right. Amen. But within that, there is a great hope and grace. It is not a ruthless, condemning voice. It is not the lies and heaping on of guilt that the enemy will attempt to wreak havoc over us. So step away from that dark cloud and into God's light and truth. God bless.